Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Arko. Uh, I'm an engineer at Tetrade and one of the maintainers on the Envoy Gateway project. Uh, and today we'll talk about what's new in the project. The last time we met was in KubeCon Q- EU in March. We had just GA'd with 1.0. Uh, since then, we've been releasing every quarter with 1.1 in July and 1.2 in November. Uh, we've been following the same release cadence as on by proxy, and we lag by, lag by about two weeks. Uh, the support policy for each of these releases um, is six months, so we've also released patch fixes uh, for bugs and CVE fixes. Uh, in these last two releases, we've released a lot of features, some fit on the slide and many that didn't. I'll highlight my top five. Um, active passive failover that lets you route to a fallback backend only when the active backend is unhealthy. Uh, request authorization that lets you decide which uh, request to accept based on the client IP or the JWT claims and scopes. Standalone mode that lets you run on by gateway, on by proxy, on the Linux host outside Kubernetes. Uh, response overrides, which lets you standardize your error responses for APIs for your clients and Envoy extension policy that lets you run custom, custom logic uh, that doesn't live in Envoy proxy using a WASM module or um, external processing service. Our first few adopters were uh, users building brand new greenfield uh, platforms. But with the last two releases, we're seeing a lot of users migrate to Envoy Gateway for their brownfield platforms as well. Here are some stats to validate that. Um, Helm seems to be the most common way to consume Envoy Gateway. Um, users can deploy these charts directly using the Helm CLI, um, or also using CD tools like Argo CD. Um, this graph taken from Docker Hub, where our charts live, showed that our pulls, monthly pulls increased from 7,000 last October, last November, to 64,000 this October. We're also seeing an increase in um, Slack conversations, uh, 2,000 uh, daily visits on GitHub, over 700 GitHub issues created, uh, signaling to us that more users are using Envoy Gateway. Uh, let's look at the ecosystem. So we're also seeing many CNCF projects integrated with Envoy Gateway for their ingress solution. Quadrant, a new CNCF sandbox project uh, that adds additional uh, policies like DNS policy um, and auth policy on top of Gateway API has recently added native support for Envoy Gateway. Knative, the serverless platform, is integrating with Gateway API, and it's added Envoy Gateway into its conformance testing suite. In the world of Gen AI, we're seeing two use cases emerge. Uh, the Ingress Gateway can be used to deploy advanced load balancing and routing algorithms to improve throughput and latency to target the right model servers running in Kubernetes. The LLM instance gateway project is driving this work, and they're POCing it with Envoy Gateway. They're trying out different implementations using the uh, external processing service. Um, The other use case is clients making API calls to LLM providers. And egress gateway uh, is useful here as a point of governance, message transformation, um, upstream authorization, and token rate limiting. We're seeing the Envoy AI Gateway project here try to solve this use case on top of Envoy Gateway. We've achieved a lot this year, and none of this would have been possible without our community. So thank you all for investing your efforts in this project. Uh, shout out to our new maintainers, Guy, Wobbing, and Sean, and Lior, who's our new reviewer. Thank you for attending this talk. Here's the link to the website. Do check it out. A lot of us are at KubeCon this week. Uh, swing by the Project Pavilion and the Envoy kiosk and come say hi. Uh, we also have a meeting scheduled on Thursday at 1.30. Thank you.